Dr. Zakir with you and I am going to tell you, I am going to talk to you about multinodal goiter, the non-toxic variety and mainly concentrating on investigation. This is a part 3 video. And in part 1, I have dealt mainly with how the thyroid gland works, what are the functions and why some of them they get multinodal goiter. And in the second variety, second part 2 video, we have, I have told you about, I have discussed about the common patient complaints and the examination, when the doctor examined what are the positive findings. And this part concentrating mainly on investigation and the last part mainly on the surgical treatment, mainly concentrating on post-operative care. So let us start with the investigation. So the basic investigation to start with, I will do a thyroid function test. So as the topic I have already told you, this is multinodular goiter with non-toxic variety. Non-toxic means the thyroid function will be normal, means TSH, T3, T4, all the three hormones will be normal. The next investigation will be ultrasonography of the neck. That will tell me and it will give me a diagnosis that it is multinodular goiter. And by the way, this when you do an ultrasound, it gives us an idea whether it is benign or malignant or it is thyroiditis or some, it gives us a basic idea. Let me first finish off the main investigations, then I will tell you when do you suspect malignancy. And in ultrasonography, you have a new variety called elastography which helps us more to differentiate between a benign condition and a malignancy. And uh, this is a controversy, but some of the centers they have good results and some of them they, it's a controversy. It helps us, this elastography, ultrasonography, elastography helps us to differentiate between benign lesion from a malignant lesion. So when we find a nodule and if the size of the nodule is more than 10 millimeter, we would prefer to put in a small needle, aspirate and send for examination of the cells so that we can come to a diagnosis. That is called as fine needle aspiration. So usually it is done when the size of the nodule is more than 10 millimeters. So does that mean that if it is less than 10 millimeters, we will not do a uh, FNAC? No. In some situations, even if it is between 5 to 10 millimeters, we will prefer and we will go ahead and do an FNAC. I will tell you later on, I will tell you which are the conditions where we prefer to do an FNAC when the nodule is less than 10 millimeters. The next inv investigation be being, so um, thyroid scan. So if you do a thyroid scan, we can, the, it can, maybe it's an uptake is more, maybe no. It will show whether it's a cold nodule or it's a warm nodule. That if, but usually in multinodal or goiter, we don't prefer to do a thyroid scan. The next basic investigations like chest x-ray and ECG will be done. And I will do a flexible endoscopy also because inside the vocal co you know, voice box, you have vocal cords which is supplied by the corresponding nerves. Suppose the thyroid gland is enlarged, it compresses on one of the nerves, it can paralyze one of the nerves and the vocal cord will not be moving properly. So I will show you subsequently, I will show you uh, the normal action of the vocal cord and if it is paralyzed. Now after the ultrasonography of the neck, if you ask me, you need a CT, prefer MRI scan. First, let me tell you the indications. When do you prefer to take a CT scan of the neck and the upper chest? Usually, CT scan of the neck. Patients with severe airway compromise and presence and to know the presence and extent of the extension of the thyroid gland. When from the neck, it has extended down to the upper chest. And the last, if there is unusual uh, extension, it goes behind the foot pipe also. These are the uh, normal indications. And we prefer to do CT scan with contrast. So what happens when you do this CT scan with contrast? The contrast given is iodine based. See, suppose after the surgery for multinodal goiter, if, if, if so happens the patient needs surgery and we have done a surgery for that and if it so happens the biopsy report has come as malignancy. In that case, we need to further investigate the patient with the iodine scan. So, this CT scan we have done with a contrast which is already iodine based. 
So what happens after surgery, we don't want any iodine containing tissue in the body. So since we have taken a CT scan with contrast, the contrast can containing iodine, the further investigation after the surgery with the iodine scan will get delayed. So we prefer to do a MRI scan. Now the other baseline investigations like normal, we like to know the uh, serum calcium level or it is better that we do ionized calcium and corrected calcium. Why? Because suppose postoperatively the patient develops hypocalcium and the calcium level drop down, drops down. So it is always best to know the normal value before surgery. And along with that it is preferred that we do a serum phosphorus level also and serum vitamin D level also. So this is a picture of ultrasound guidance fine needle aspiration. Now talking about fine needle aspiration, that is we will put in a small needle into the uh, inside the nodule and aspirate the contents and send it for examination to know the type of cell. So we will uh, put in a needle in the biggest nodule and we prefer to do it when the size of the nodule is more than 10 millimeters. So I have told you that I will tell you the conditions where we do even when it is less than 10 millimeters that is between 5 to 10 millimeters. So in the ultrasonography of the neck, if we find any one of these, one or two of features of any of these, I will go ahead and do a fine needle aspiration even if it is less than 10 millimeters. So in the ultrasonography, if it is the nodules are hypoechoic, means it is solid nodule, along with that you may have a micro calcification and the, the nodules, the margins are irregular and you find, may find the blood flow inside, increased blood flow inside the nodule and the anterior posterior diameter is different, increased, absence of halo and or the patient has got along with the thyroid swelling on the same uh, side, you, the, the patient has got a, another nodule like the cervical node is enlarged. If any of these one or two are there, I will definitely prefer go ahead and do an FNSC even the nodule size is less than 10 millimeters and not only that, some other features like if there is a family history of thyroid malignancy and if the patient has to be a male gender or the extreme of age less than 20 and more than 60 or if there is a previous history of radiation during childhood, in these patients also if the nodule thyroid nodule size is less than 10 millimeter also, I will definitely go ahead and do a fine needle aspiration. And one thing I want to highlight that sometimes it so happens sometimes it so happens that when we put in a needle the report comes as that the sample is not adequate in that case we have to repeat the sample so when you put in a needle please don't be on the assumption that this is a final one sometimes we need to repeat it repeat the so that we come to a diagnosis so that is about fine needle aspiration now when you uh, get a report of that fine needle aspiration, the final impression if you read, it will come into any of these category, type 1 to type 6, I am talking about Bethesda system. Type 1 means it is not diagnostic, means we have to repeat the fine needle aspiration. Type 2 means it is benign, means it is not malignant, but we have to be careful, maybe it can turn malignant, so the patient has to be in regular follow up. The third type being atypical cells with undetermined significance. So that means we have to be sure about it. So we need to repeat the fine needle aspiration. Type 4 and type 5 is suspicious, surely we will go ahead and do a surgery. And type 6 being sure malignancy and no doubt we need surgery for the condition. So this is a CT scan of the patient where it shows a huge thyroid gland and it is extending down into the upper chest too. Now if we, the patient diagnosis multinodular goiter, he or she neglects the condition, what will happen? So as and when the disease progresses, the thyroid gland becomes bigger in size, it will lead to breathing difficulty and change of voice and solid difficulty. Not only that, there is, there is 2 to 5 percentage chance that the patient may develop thyroid malignancy. These are the th normal complications which you see. Now. In this part, third part, I have told you mainly concentrating the investigation related only to multinodal or goiter non-toxic variety, not, to, not related to other diseases. 
please do watch the part 4 video where I will be concentrating on the treatment mainly the surgical treatment and most important being the post operative care. Thank you so much.